Hello my friends and welcome to the final video for the Sandra PDA sweater. I could not help myself. I had to put the sweater on today so that way you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and what you're working for. I, I love this sweater so very much. It feels so good and it fits in all the right places and yours is almost done and you'll be able to wear yours in no time as well. Okay, by this point, you should have completed the front and the back of the sweater. So this video is all about the seaming techniques and we're gonna talk about the cuff and the neckline, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to do the three needle bind off to join the seam at the top part of the sweater. Once we've completed that three needle bind off, we actually move into the ribbing for the cuffs. Because I didn't wanna make you have to do um, ribbing in the round and work with double pointed needles for this little tiny circumference, I had you make the cuff ribbing as the sleeve is still flat. And then what happens is when we seam up the sides, the two sides together completely underneath the underarm, we will go all the way continuously through the cuffs and you will have a nice finish. The very last thing we do is pick up stitches around the neckline right here. And again, you just work back and forth. And then we have a nice little seam at the right shoulder. It's, it's very, very, very simple. Now at that point, if you prefer to do something in the round and you have smaller needles, you could do that if you wanted to. But um, I tried to make it pretty darn simple so that you just had to make the whole thing flat. So as I mentioned in this video, we are going to talk about the seaming. So let's start off with the three needle bind off. And then I am going to show you how you would pick up stitches to do your ribbing. And then I will show you how to do the mattress stitch seam along the rows and along the stitches. So grab your work. Let's get started. To show you the three needle bind off, I am going to use the sample swatch I had for the front of the sweater. And then I have this just little makeshift piece that's going to represent the back of the sweater for this example. Now, if you remember, as you were working on your sweaters, you were um, told that you could either put all of your yarn on a holder or on a spare needle. It's at this point in time, you need your stitches on needles, okay? So if, for example, you have one uh, of your uh, sweater front or your sweater back on spare yarn, you wanna put the, the shoulder you're going to be seaming to the opposite shoulder on a needle. So that way they're both on needles. And then I'm using a double pointed needle as my third needle because it just makes things so much easier than trying to maneuver another, you know, the other side of the needle. And if you're using one needle here, like one end here and one end there, you still need a third needle. So that's where my double point is coming in. It's just going to be there to maneuver those bind offs. Okay. Now when it comes to the bind offs, when this bind off is executed, you want to do it where the right sides are actually facing each other. And if you took my suggestion of the stitch marker on the right side of your work, you essentially want your stitch markers to be kissing each other, right? So that way your shoulders up here are are matched up, they should have the same number of stitches on each side, and we're going to bind off. The reason you need the right sides facing each other is because that bind off seam is going to go on the inside of our work. Having said that, if you wanted the seam to be a design feature of yours and have it on the outside of the work, you could totally do that. Just match up the wrong sides and follow along with what I'm getting ready to tell you. Okay. I have yarn already attached to this shoulder right here. I left a long tail here so that way I could use it for this purpose. If you did not do that, that's absolutely okay. Just grab your yarn and you're going to attach it just like you would if you were adding a new ball of yarn. So a three needle bind off is a basic bind off. However, we are going to work into the stitch on the front needle and the stitch on the back needle at the same time to knit each stitch. So when we bind off, we knit two stitches, then the back stitch jumps the front. So we would knit this one and then knit this one and have the back jump the front. What we are going to do here is go into the front one and then go into the back one in the same manner, 
knit those together. So you yarn over your needle, come out the back stitch, come out the front stitch, have those two stitches jump off of both of those needles and you're left with one stitch on your right hand needle. Do it again into the front stitch, into the back stitch or the back needle stitch, yarn over, go out the back stitch, go out the front stitch, have both of those jump off. You're left with two stitches and you would do this just like you would any other bind off. Just have the back jump the front. Okay, make sure you don't make that too tight because you don't want this to um, like cinch up too much like, like it, it puckers um, along the edge of your sweater. Okay, so make sure that you're keeping these bind offs consistent with the size of your needle. Okay, then you do it again. Go in the front, go in the back, yarn over, come out both and off, have the back, jump the front, in, in around, out, off, back, jump the front. I'm going to keep doing this all the way down. Notice the double pointed needle really is just there, like I said, to facilitate this action. We're not using it as a double point. So you don't need to be freaked out if you're somebody who doesn't like double points, okay? And the double point is the same size as the needles that I used for knitting my sweater because as you are knitting these stitches here, as we knit them onto the double point, the double point is regulating the size of those stitches. So you want them to be the same size as the stitches of your garment. So you want to make sure your double point is the same size. This one over here is getting a little bit loose because it was the end here. You can see the tail. off. Okay. And the back. Jump the front. I'm left with one stitch. So I can cut my yarn. I still want to make sure I leave a tail here so that way I can weave it in. And if I open this up, what you will notice, I'm going to pull those tails over here. So I have a little bit of a seam here at the top of my shoulder and that goes all the way down my sleeve. And this is not a bad thing because this helps hold the weight of your garment. So it gives your garment some structure and it doesn't like show. Like if you're looking at it on me, like it, it looks fine, like nothing, it doesn't show. It looks really good. And then if we flip this over, you can see we have a very beautiful seam right here. Now I am going to tell you like I ended on the wrong wrong row on this little swatch over here because I just wasn't thinking. So yours will actually they'll not be like one on top of the other. They'll they'll continue the pattern. So that way it will look like it's just continuous. But it looks really great, right? And it's really easy to put together. Okay, once you have your shoulders and the, the top of the sleeve completely seamed up, that's when you will tackle the cuff. So let's talk about how you would pick up those stitches along that sleeve edge to work the cuff. And it's gonna be the same way you're gonna pick up stitches for the neckline as well. So we're gonna get um, a double doozy here. Let's talk about doing the ribbing for the cuffs and the neckline. As I mentioned, I didn't want you to have to work circularly on this piece. So when your shoulders are all seamed up, you're going to turn your work on the side and we're gonna work along this sleeve edge over here and pick up stitches. So grab your needles and grab the same color yarn you're using for your project. I'm gonna use a different color yarn just so you can see what I'm doing here. You wanna start off with the right side facing you. And the instructions tell you how many stitches you're supposed to pick up along this edge 
as even as possible. So you could use stitch markers and divide this up into sections so that way you have little incremental sections like maybe you have 10, 10, 10, and 10 to pick up along the row. You could do whatever works best for you. But essentially, you have this nice seam right here, right? So that's a halfway point. So you know that you need to have half of the number of stitches you have to pick up on one side and the other half on the second side. Again, I did not make this to scale, obviously, so this is not going to be um, exact as far as how many stitches on each side, but you get the idea, right? So as long as you have half the number of stitches over here and half the number of stitches, you're okay. Start off, I like to come up here at the edge and I like to go right into the edge just at the very corner and, and stick my needle in. I would go underneath two loops if I were you. One loop, it starts to look a little, a little too spaced out. You start to get to a hole where the cuff and the sweater meet, and I don't really like it. So you saw I put my needle in, I yarned over my needle, and I pulled up a loop, and that's it. I go to the next stitch over, put my needle in, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Try not to split yarn if you can. And you just do this along the whole way. And you try and do things as evenly across the, the row as you possibly can. Try and make it look as uniform as you can. Now, if you struggle with just putting the needle in, yarning over and pulling up a loop like, like I am able to do, you could always take the other end of your needle, find where you want to create that stitch and stick your other end of the needle in there. Now, imagine that that stitch right there that you just stuck your needle in, imagine that's a stitch that would be on your left hand needle. And then go into it just like you would if you were knitting and knit it. Okay, go to the next one, wherever that may be. Go into it and knit it. So if you're struggling, this is one way that you can really make sure you know, you're getting the stitches in there as easily as possible and you can move along. You can split the yarn there. Uh, if you're familiar with crochet hook, if you're by crafty, you could always use a crochet hook to pick up stitches. But you can see there, I've picked up the stitches. They look pretty nice and even to me. I just went right along the seam there. See, I did not do anything special. So if I just kept going here, I could just keep going and pick up stitches and make sure I have the correct stitch count. And then once all of your stitches are on here, you will turn your work and your very first row is a wrong side row. And just follow along with the instructions where you will start off with a, a purl two, and then you go knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and you'll end with a purl two. And what that does is when everything is seamed up along the edges with the mattress stitch, you will have a continuous seam all the way around the cuff, you can see here, and it will look really, really super nice. You see that? All right, so the same thing applies if you're picking up the stitches along the neckline. Of course, you don't do the neckline until after the cuffs are done and the seaming is done on the side, but let's just take a peek here at this neckline. When you're doing the neckline, you wanna start at the corner. So you're gonna start at one of the, the corners um, where the seam is, and the same, applies. You're just going to pick up all along this edge here to the other seam and then all along the back, however the back is, and you just pick it up. Okay. And you're not going to join over here at this seam if you're not working in the round. You'll work back and forth just like you did on the cuffs and you're going to make, you're going to make this as I touch my microphone, you're gonna make this nice collar. Now, one thing I do want to warn you about when it comes to the ribbing and doing your bind off, you do not wanna bind off too tight and you wanna make sure you're binding off in pattern. So just be very aware if your stitches look like they're getting too snug as you're binding off, that's not good because you won't be able to get your hand through the cuff or your head through the, the crew neck portion here, right? So you wanna make sure that those are um, at least uh, have some elasticity and flexibility to them so you can you can actually wear your sample all right okay so that's how you're going to do the cuff and the collar now let's talk about how you're gonna do that mattress stitch we're gonna start off with seaming up along the rows and then I'm gonna talk to you about how you will seam up along the stitch edge all right
Okay, we're gonna learn a little bit about mattress stitch today. And what I have here, I have two little swatches with some two by two ribbing at the bottom and then basic stockinette. Now, I know that our sweater obviously has the holy knit stitch pattern, but you remember the edges of that pattern are in stockinette. So you will be seaming along two stockinette stitches um, along those sides. So this is a really good example. Now I am going to seam it with a different color yarn, hoping that you can see that what I'm doing a little bit easier. And what I am going to do is you want the right sides facing you when you do this seam. So it's different than when we did the three needle bind off. And what will happen is when you have the right sides facing you, we're gonna start off down here at this bottom edge and you're going to come up one stitch from the back into one of your pieces, one of your sides. Now, I like to start with um, a figure eight start, so I come up on one and then I'm gonna come over here to the direct opposite side, I'm coming up on the other And you can see, so I have a figure eight started. Can you see that? And so what will happen here is now I come up over here one more time. And all that is doing is it's, it's joining my yarn here at the very base so I don't have to worry about it coming undone and I'm just going to give it a little tug, okay? So now I have my two pieces. Now what we're going to do here, we have two knit stitches here, right? We have a knit stitch here and a knit stitch here. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to work up between the, the stitch between the knit stitch here and the knit stitch here. I'm going to work up along this column. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to work up along this column. And when I do that, it's going to bring these two pieces together and it's going to make it look like it's just one two by two section. So my yarn is over here. I'm going to pop back over here. I'm going to go in and I'm coming down to the bottom as far as I can, and then I'm coming up between the column, and I'm grabbing two bars. I don't know if you can see that, but I have two bars. And I'm gonna pull my yarn up. Now I'm not gonna pull this really tight to start with, okay guys? I'm not gonna pull this really tight to begin with. I think I just pulled my tail out, I did. Well, anyways, I should've left my tail longer. Anyways, so two up, come over here, Go in where I came out over here and go up and two bars. And give it a tug. And you repeat this, and I'm not gonna pull it real tight to begin with because you wanna be able to see where you came out. So you go in where you came out, go up, I'm picking up two bars, and I do it again. Go in where you came out, go up, pick up two bars and continue. We'll do this all the way along this row. And as you're going along, you do wanna make sure that you know, you're not accidentally seaming where, where it gets off track. You wanna make sure that your, your ribbing sections are all the same, everything lines up nice and neat. You don't want it to be off kilter. And again, I'm just grabbing two bars the whole time. If for some reason you need to just grab one bar to keep things on track, you can do that. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna pause after I do this one. Now you can see here that I haven't pulled anything tight, but you can clearly see that I have this nice row of knitting right here and this nice row of knitting right here. Here's my tail down here, here's my tail up here for my working yarn. And this is going to be like a zipper. Because my yarn is strong enough to handle this, I can go ahead and pull both of these tight. And you see how that pulls it together like a zipper. And I have my seam on the inside and it looks seamless. Can you see that? See how it looks seamless? And now we're gonna continue working that up along, along the body. Okay, so as you keep going here, I came out over here, you can kind of spread it apart a little bit if you tightened it up, find where you came out, and again, keep going up between those two stitch columns, and you just keep grabbing two bars, so that's one bar, 
there's two bars and you just keep going and that's the mattress stitch y'all it's really it's really beautiful when you have done it right and it's quite easy because you're just it's like a ladder right you're just laddering up and you can do this in sewing as well you can do an invisible mattress stitch to sew together um, fabric you can do this in crochet. You can go between stitches and seam things up like this in crochet. Um, it's a really beautiful way to seam pieces together. And clearly my two swatches here are not the same size, so one's a little bigger than the other. But I'm going up to the top of this one at least. I'm going to give that a pull. And look, it doesn't even matter that I used a different color because when it's all pulled together, it's, it's invisible and it looks great, right? Isn't that cool? I love that. I think that's just like one of the coolest things. All right, so that's how you do mattress stitch when you're matching up like rows to rows, right? We did rows to rows. But what if we do stitches to stitches? Which is exactly what you do when we have the front sleeve meet the back sleeve right down here, right? These are stitches to stitches. So we need to know how we do that. It's really similar. We're gonna pick up the two legs of a stitch and work through in the same manner. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna use this swatch to seam to this one. And I'm just gonna partner these up just like so, okay? So what we're imagining here is this is the bottom of your sleeve where we did all those sleeve increases. And we're gonna gradually join those together. Now, I will tell you, because there's sort of those stair steps, there's gonna be times you get a little bit of that bump that's gonna go inside on the seam. You're never gonna feel it. like, I don't feel it as I'm wearing it. It's not going to get in the way, just completely ignore it. But what we're going to do here is when we partner these up seam to seam or stitch to stitch, I'm sorry, we are going to take our yarn, right? Just like we did before. You can join your yarn at the edge, just like you did before. We have the right sides facing us, just like we did before. And what's gonna happen, so our yarn came up right here. So I'm gonna come over here and we're going to go underneath two legs of the corresponding stitch. So as your pieces are matched up, you wanna make sure you have them matched up like stitch for stitch on the front and the back. So I'm just gonna pretend it's this one. Actually, I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna think it's this one, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my yarn through those two legs. Leave it a little bit loose. Come back over here, go in where I came out just like I did before. And I'm gonna go underneath two legs over here for a stitch. Come over here, go in where I came out, go underneath two legs. Go in where I came out, go underneath two legs. And you just keep doing this, so on and so forth. As you match everything up, if you come to, you wanna try and get underneath the two legs, I should've said this earlier, as close to the edge as you can and try and stay within the same line. I decided not to go, I'm, I'm down a little bit, I'm down just a little bit here, I'm going down one extra um, from the edge. You wanna go right there into the edge, but I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna keep going here. Like you can see over here, I'm right down here to the edge and then just stay, stay within whatever line for the row you're working on, okay? So just like before, as it looks kind of zigzaggy, right? You can pull one side and it will match it up and it looks seamless. How cool is that? Again, on the other side, this is where your seam is. See, this is what happens if you don't go right along the edge, you get a little bit more of a bulk there, which is fine because that's actually what it's gonna look like just a little bit as you um, are creating those extra stitches and you have that little, you didn't create extra, when you did create extra stitches and you have that stair step, you're gonna have that little bit of a bulk, but not, not bad at all. But over here, you can see it's nice and nice and flat, but you get this really beautiful, beautiful seam. And you'll do that all the way down. And the same thing applies when you get down here to where your ribbing is, as long as you're working between the two stitches here, right? You just work between those. Everything's gonna match up. Everything's gonna look great. And you're gonna have a good time.
pretty cool, right? So the, the seaming process should not be something that is super scary to you. The fact that I, yo I chose to use the three needle bind off for the shoulders, um, I think that that's really handy because it's just one of those finishes that's super fast to do. And then doing the mattress stitch along the, the, you know, the side seams and the underneath of the sleeve, I mean, that's, that's a universal skill that you need for a lot of different pieces. So um, having a chance to learn that here for this cute top is um, really fantastic. All right, y'all. So what do you think? What do you think? Are you excited to finish your very own Sander PDA? Um, I can tell you unequivocally that this is one of my most favorite sweater designs I've ever made, designed, anything like that. And as I started off this series, I never thought I would like something cropped, but as I mentioned to you, it fits absolutely perfect right here, like high waist, and it just looks really great as you're wearing it. Right now I have it partnered up with a tank top dress, so it's just like that little bit of an extra covering on a dress. I could put it um, over a camisole. I could do whatever I want with it and it's going to look fabulous. I cannot wait to see your finished sweaters. So please, please, please be sure to share with me on social media. Just a reminder, I am the Marley Bird on Instagram, or you can always leave a comment over in the Marley's Minions Facebook group because we love seeing all of your work. And if you and your friends were making this together, I would love a group photo of all of you uh, with your finished sweaters on. I think that would be really awesome. All right, everybody, I know that you are eager to finish your sweater with all that seaming and that little bit of the ribbing left over, and I'm gonna let you get to it. I'm Marley Bird, your Bycrafty Bestie, and I will see you in the next project. <laughs> Bye.